So excited to highlight a beautiful plant for you today that has a ton of medicinal and health benefits. That's right, it's the beautiful echinacea or coneflower and you can use almost the entire plant for medicinal and health benefits. Let's talk about it. Today we're gonna to talk about how to grow the plant, how to harvest the plant, and how to use it for those health benefits like making a tea or a tincture. First, let's talk about how it grows. So the most common echinacea used for medicinal purposes is echinacea purpurea, and that is still simply cone flower that you can find even at your big box stores. But take a look at the actual Latin name on each tag if they have it, and find echinacea purpurea, that's the best one. And of course the disclaimer, I am not a health professional, so any of the claims I make in this you will have to research on your own and check with your doctor. But this has been used for thousands of years as a medicinal plant and is classified by the FDA as a supplement. So you will see that on echinacea in pill form at the store and on the tea as well. So as I said, echinacea is a perennial and it will self seed. These little cones at the top of the cone flower have little seeds in them and they will drop off and self seed. Harvesting the seeds from these is very easy. You just roll around the dried flower head and the seeds will just drop out. Additionally, the roots can be divided. So when you're harvesting the roots for its medicinal properties, you can divide it up and start new plants that way. It's kind of similar to a strawberry. Echinacea does well in a variety of different soils and it's fairly drought resistant. So it's really, really easy to grow. You can see one here that is completely died off, but beware, these are still alive. You can see a new one sprouting from the roots below here. Really cool thing about echinacea is that you can use the entire plant. The roots are the most nutritious though, and they will give you the most health benefit. But so many people make tea from the leaves and the flower petals also the young flower buds. So before I show you how to harvest it, I wanna mention the specific health benefits. Echinacea has long been known for immune support and that is its best uh, attribute. Additionally, it is an anti-inflammatory. So those kind of go hand in hand together. What people also don't know is that it will fight yeast infections. So it has a lot of different positive properties to it, but most definitely the biggest one is that immune support. And according to the website WebMD, what it does is the echinacea will stimulate chemicals in the body that will reduce inflammation. Now let's show you how to harvest the different parts. Now you can see we do have some blooming here, and if you want to use the blooms, then we are just gonna cut these off right above the leaves right here. We're gonna leave the stem kind of long. So, additionally, right underneath it, I have a very young one. Now these are great for tea, and I'm gonna just snip that off at the end as well. I'm going to leave those stems nice and long on this plant, because as you can see, this has a lot sprouting from it on the stem itself so it will continue to do so. Now one of the plants like this where the stems have started to die back, these are just easily pulled out, straight out of the ground like that. You're not gonna really use these for anything except for the seed. Now if you wanna take a big cutting from this and use a lot of leaves, what you wanna do is cut down at the base. But if you do so, then you need to leave a decent amount of first level leaves at the bottom. And if your plant is big enough, obviously don't cut it back more than you need to. You want the plant to continue to survive, although it will from the roots, having green leaves on the top is really important. So we will come down to the bottom here and we'll take basically the center leaves and we'll leave that outer ring of lower leaves alone. Now what I'm not going to show you today actually is the roots because for you to be able to harvest the roots from your echinacea, you need to do it after the third year. That's when they are fully established, between th year three and five really. 
what you actually want to do is dig a good amount of space around that plant, gently get it out of the ground, and survey where you can break off the youngest roots. Those young roots are going to be used to plant back in the ground. The older, thicker roots are the ones that you want for your tea. Now we're going to dry these. If you are going to dry a larger plant, you can hang them up outside in a breezy area underneath a covered porch or something like that. For us, we're just going to take these in and lay them out on a countertop. They should dry off or dry in just a few days. But if you want, you can use a dehydrator. However, be very careful because if you get the heat too high in a dehydrator, then you're going to kill off the nutrients that are in your flowers, especially the petals. Those are very delicate and the leaves. Usually a temperature of about 112 is appropriate for drying delicate things like this. And if you have a lot and the time and the energy, you can actually freeze dry these as well. Now, if you're drying those thicker roots I was talking about earlier, you can use the dehydrator also. You can also leave them out on the countertop, although those are going to take about two weeks to dry out. So if you are going to use a lot of this and you have a great need for it, make sure you plant the appropriate amount. And of course, if you're going to sell it, you need to plant a lot of it. But if you harvest it properly, then it will serve you for many years to come. So the easiest way to use echinacea after you've dried it is to use it as a tea. One of these little tea balls here, this is about the same size, just a different shape, is the best way to make a tea out of it. You're just going to take your dried flower or leaves, crumple up enough to fill this halfway, and you're good to go. Usually two large flowers or two large leaves is enough to get a perfect cup of tea from. And of course, the roots are going to be a little bit different depending on the size of your plant. Now for a tincture, we will do a video on that in the future, but usually they are made with alcohol. And what that alcohol does is it pulls out all of those nutritional properties out of the plant material itself and infuses it within the alcohol. Rarely it's done with a vinegar base. Usually the alcohol is the better solution though. Now if you are in a hurry or in a rush to make a tea from this, you need some benefit from it, you can use it green. It's not written in stone that you have to dry it, although it does work better that way. When the plant parts are dry, it's much easier for that water, that warm water, to contact it and pull out those nutrients from it. But if you let green material steep long enough, it will work. All right, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe. Now click here, which is our video on all of our medicinal plants here on our homestead. The list is pretty extensive, but I will actually make a part two because there are so many. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.